Yeah, hello, this is part two of Principal Components little mini series that I'm doing. I'm going to call this uh, video derivation where we derive how to calculate the principal components. And also give a basic intuition of what we're trying to do here. I have some background videos that we're going to quote. Uh, we're going to quote BV2 and 3 in, in the proofs, which it deals with eigenvalue inequalities. Um, of course, look at part one of this video where we talk about axis rotations and ellipses. And, and actually, BV4, as I'm writing these down, I stop this video just before a couple theorems where I use the spectral decomp. So technically, I don't use it in this video, but part three, I will. So here's the situation. Kind of ignore this for now. We have data. And... And we have axis x1 and x2. And for now, ignore those. And so, um, the, according to x1, there's some sort of variance associated with this data. Right? And, and in the x2 direction, if you push it all down, there's a variance associated with it. Okay? But... Um, so x2, the direction is this way. You know, x1 is this way. So if we look at the, the variance associated with x1. But what if we rotated the axes and then looked at the variance here? And then what about here? And then what about here and here and here and here? At some point, there's a direction where the variance is maximized. It's, it's the maximum it can be. Okay? And we, we rotate the axis, this x1 axis, to be, you know, to be in the direction of maximum variance, okay? So this maximum variance is a vector, L1. So it's a linear combination of x1 and x2 such that it's the direction of maximum variance, right? And we call that axis y1. Now, in two space, this axis is determined, right? Because if you're rotating it, this has to be a 90 degree. It's orthogonal to one. So this direction, we'll call it L2, which is also a linear combination of X1 and X2. Um, <coughs> this is the rotated axis. Now, well, it turns out this Y1 is called the first principal component. And this Y2 is the second principal component. Okay, so that's, that's what we try to do is we rotate the x1 axis in the direction of maximum variance. So it's the variance of the linear combination of the x's. And that's, that's the first principal component. So the new axes in, in, in BV1, we, taught, we show that if you know the direction, to find the new axes, you, you take this vector product, and that's the new axes. And that's the new axes. Okay? So here, here's a question for you. So how much of the total variance... Oh, no, no. I don't want to do that yet. So if we look at this data, there's some sort of variance, you know, structure associated with this variance, you know, in terms of Y1 and Y2. If we rotate this axis, what does it do to the variance? And the answer is nothing. It, it doesn't change it. The data hasn't changed at all. It's just the axes have been rotated, but the variance is still the same, right? The, nothing's changed. Um, and, and to me, I think that can be a little bit confusing for people. When you just rotate the axis, the variance still is there. Um, but one thing that we try to do in principal components instead of using in this case two variables let's use one so and let's do it in let's use the first principal component so if we map this down to the first principal components there's a variance associated with this first principal components now now it's not quite the same as the original because we're reducing it to one dimension but in principal components we're interested in this. How much of the total variance is accounted for by that first principal component right here? You know, if it accounts for a lot of it, then, hey, let's just use this Y1 
variable now instead of x1 and x2. But it also depends, like if, if this is a if fatter, then there's more variance associated with y2. So when we map it down, we're losing a lot of that variance. But if this variance is narrow, then we map it down. There's very little variance with y2, so we've accounted for most of this data. Okay, so now let's let's quickly talk about R3 space. So instead of this data in 2 space, let's assume that it's in R3 space. So, and so this is like a pickle now, for instance. So, and then it's round. It's a, and so when we look for maximum variance, um, we're, it's, we're not only rotating this way, but we're rotating up and looking at every angle possible of x1, x2, and then x3. You know, it comes straight up. And then there is some sort of direction with maximum variance. So in this case, in the pickle, it's also going to be the same, right? So that's our first principal component. But now the second axis is not predetermined, right? To be... Uh, orthogonal to this there's actually you know you can rotate it at, at any direction you know that is like this is still orthogonal so we find that vector that has maximum variance and boom then that's the y2 vector and then of course y3 is determined it has to be orthogonal to both of those and that's uh, that's finding the um you know, the principal components in three space. But now if you take that three space and say map it down to the first two components, does that account for most of the variance or not? I mean, those are the questions that we ultimately want to know. And looking at the total variance and how much is accounted for and how many principal components, that's actually going to be part of uh, part three. But, but those are the things you need to think about when we're developing these. So very generically, in, in Rn space, to calculate the first principal components, we want to maximize this linear combination, the, or the variance of this linear combination. And really, what that means is we're trying to find the direction, you know, that, that has maximum variance. That's what this means. We want, to, we want that L. And, and it's subject to the length of the vector is 1. And the reason why we do that is we could maximize this just by at, by putting in bigger and bigger constants. Then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So we have to like limit it somehow. So let's limit it to lengths of one. And then we get a then we get a definite value. Okay. So let's assume L1 is the one that the one that maximizes this, and then the uh, that's the first principal component, or really the uh, it's the axis. So this is the new axis, the rotated x1 is L1 prime x, right? And if in BV1, we show you that that's, that is actually how you drive an axis. You have a vector in that direction, take it at a linear combination of your x's, and then that's your new axis. So now the second principal component is still the maximum of this variance, the linear combination, but it's subject to a length of one and it has to be orthogonal to this first vector that we f found. And, and then there is some L out there, let's call it L2, okay? And then we just keep going. So the ith principal components, we wanna maximize this variance subject to the length of the L is one and L has to be orthogonal to all the previous, you know, vectors. And then that's Li. And then what we do is once we have all these linear combinations, you know, we create new axes. So the new axes, or the rotated axes more specifically, are Y2 through Yi or, you know, Yn, however many you have. Okay, so that's sort of generically what we're doing in principal components. So now there's a theorem here. Um, let's let x be a random vector with variance, covariance structure sigma. Let's let the eigenvalues vectors of sigma, which is an m by n positive definite matrix, be these tuples here. So that's the eigenvalue, that's the eigenvector, and there's p of them because sigma is p by p. The eigenvalues are ordered with 
lambda 1 the largest, lambda p the smallest, and the uh, eigenvectors all have length 1 and they're orthogonal. And this is called normalized set of vectors. So the ith principal component is, is actually the ith eigenvector of this sigma matrix. And so, um, well, yeah, it, and so yi, the ith principal component, is this linear combination. Now, if you do this matrix multiplication, it's this, right? The first component here goes with the first component there, the second, all the way to the p, because it's a p vector. And then also the variance of our ith component is just the eigenvalue, the ith eigenvalue of, of sigma. And the covariance of any two eigen uh, or principal components is zero. That means they're uncorrelated. Covariance of zero. So the proof of this is this. In BV2, we show that maximizing this, which this right here is um, L prime variance of XL, but this is sigma. And so we're maximizing this quantity over all L, and it, it the maximum is lambda 1. And then also in BV2, we show that lambda 1 can be achieved when this linear common, when L is the first eigenvalue. Okay, So that helps us drive the first principal component, is the first eigenvalue associated with the large, it's the eigenvector associated with the largest eigenvalue. And now we just repeat. So now, or, you know, we let the first principal component be Y1. Yep. Next, we want to find this maximum subject to the length is one and their uh, orthogonal. It's orthogonal to the previous um, eigenvector. Oh, yeah. So by BV3, and so really this should just be L right here. L is, is or this one is. So L is perpendicular to L1. Um, so by BV3, this maximum is achieved at the second largest eigenvalue. And then also by BV3, uh, uh, lambda 2 is achieved when L is the second eigenvector. It's the eigenvector associated with the second largest eigenvalue. So thus, the second principal component is this linear combination. Now we continue using BV3 to find the ith principal component, and it ends up just being the ith or the eigenvector associated with the ith largest uh, eigenvalue. And boom, that's the ith principal component. Um, now, so that's the first part of the theorem. The second part is about the variance. So the variance of yi is equal to, and this is yi. So and then the variance, this vector comes out front and it's transposed out back, and that's the variance of x. But this is a eigenvector. So this is really um, e i lambda i, and that and then lambda i comes out front. But this has a length of one, so it's just lambda i. So that's the variance associated with it. Now the covariance between any two principal components, y i and y j is the covariance of this, but this one comes out front and that one's transposed out back, and that's the variance of x, which is sigma. And then this is an eigenvector of sigma, so it's an uh, ej lambda j, and that lambda j comes out front, but this we said they were normalized, so this is zero, so the covariance is zero. Well, anyway, that's all I have for today. In the next video, we're going to start talking about how much variance is associated with the principal components. Remember, if you use all the principal components, the variance doesn't change. But the goal is to maybe just use a few of those principal components, and maybe that accounts for a most of the variance in our data. Well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please like it and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.